Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I am Reverend Park here at Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California. And this is another choir Bible study. And we just want to thank you for joining us again as we study the Word of God. Amen. As we continue to lift up the name of Jesus, we continue to call on Him, and we continue to lean on Him, and we continue to trust in Him, knowing that He is our answer, He is the way, He is the truth and the life, that everlasting life that he's promised each and every one of us. But you first must be born again, and you first must believe, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart uh, that he is God. And he is God, and that he came, and he saved us all uh, in the parties of our sin. And so as we get into this lesson, we want to uh, first have a little short scripture, and then we'll... Uh, have a prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson. Amen. I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, uh, read along with me. I'm going to come from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Uh, that's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it reads, I have the King James Version, so read along. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. And I just read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Excuse me, let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, I want to say thank you, Lord, for blessing us with another day. Lord, we know that you are the creator of all things. We just want to acknowledge you and thank you, Lord, for waking us up, closing our right eye. Start us on another day's journey with you. Yes, Lord, it's always great to journey with you, Lord, and always knowing that you are with us, Father God. No matter where we're going, go, going or what we're going through, you are right there, Father. You said in your own word, you will never leave us nor forsake us, Father. And I thank you for always being there. I thank you for being a very present help in a time of trouble. Father, uh, I have a special petition, Lord, that you just uh, forgive us of our sin. And they be many, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to continue to watch us and cleanse us. And your blood, Lord, because your blood still has the power, Father God, to heal us and to uh, bring us closer to you. Lord, we ask you to watch over our pastor, Father God, and we lift him up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Asking you, Father God, to continue to build him up where he's going now. To be your Father God, to give him that rest in you. Yes, Lord, nothing like that rest in you, Father God, that Lord, we know that you will see us here, Lord, and we'll get that rest that goes beyond our understanding, Lord, that peace, Lord, and we need it, we all need it, Lord, he needs it, and so, Father God, we just ask that you give it to us, Father. Yes, Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to continue to be with his family, uh, Lord, his sons, his daughters, his wife, Lord, we just lift them all up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to lift up every choir member right now. Uh, as we lift them up to you, Father, and ask you to just be with each and every one and continue to watch and study the Word of God as we continue to just uh, lean on you, O oh God, and trust in you and, and believe that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may take or ask. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus to continue to be with Sister Maria, my daughter Anna, and Sandra, Lord, continue to be with her, Lord, help them to make decisions, O oh God, that uh, you know our right, the decisions that you would have them to make. Let them lean on you, on your understanding, Father God. Let them trust in you, believe and hold on to you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we just ask you to be with all our uh, staff here at Community Baptist Church, ministers, ministry, auxiliaries, and all our uh, Sunday school, our Bible study, Lord. Just be with them all, Lord. We just need you, Father God. We need you so much each and every day. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, as we study your word today, we just want to say thank you for just uh, making a way out of no way for us to be here today, Lord. It's always just a pleasure to study your word. And so, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable with thy sight. Oh, Lord, thy strength is our redeemer. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. <clears throat> and so our lesson comes from Luke the 17th chapter, verses 12 through 19. So 
that's Luke, the 17th chapter, verses uh, 12 through 19. I have the King James Version, but whatever we first do, I read along with this. And it reads, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, saying, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. And so our lesson today, our key verse comes from Luke the 17th, uh, chapter the 19th verse. And he said, <laughs> and he said, Arise, go your way, uh, your faith has made you well. <laughs> Amen. And so let's read our lesson. The lesson today is called Healing for Your Hurts. Healing for Your Hurts. Amen. And it should be on your monitor now, so let's read it on here. The men with leprosy mentioned in today's reading were social outcasts. Few sicknesses were feared more than leprosy. The New Testament times, in the New Testament time, it was incurable and a sentence of sure death. Therefore, when the men saw Jesus, they knew he was their only chance of survival. Amen. Perhaps you are facing something that feels as though it will be the end of you. Thoughts of hopelessness fill, with, fill your mind and leave you wondering if there is a cure for what you are facing. Jesus has the power to heal. He will touch your life and relieve the stress and sorrow uh, for your disease. These men called out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Warn Weirdsby, Weirdsby commented on this scene. They knew that Jesus was totally in command of even disease and death, and they trusted him to help them. He commanded the men to go show themselves to the priests, which in itself was an act of faith. For they had not yet been cured. When they turned to obey, they were completely healed, for their obedience was evidenced by their faith. We would expect all ten to return to the Savior, shouting words of praise and thanksgiving to God, but only one returned. He was not a Jew, but a Samaritan. God may choose to heal you now or later, as you stand one day in his presence. It is now, if it is now, remember to thank him for the goodness and mercy he has shown. And then all together at the bottom, Lord, you are my healer. You have broken the power of sin and shame in my life. Amen. And so as we gleam over this, let us see what we get on it. What I like from it so far is right at the very beginning, what we're going through now, these leopard men were going through at the time, a uh, pandemic. That's right, they were separate from the group. They couldn't hang out with the rest of the people because what they had was contagious. And so they heard of Jesus and they knew, even though they weren't all Jews, there were different people who were afflicted with this uh, uh, disease. But that didn't stop them from seeking Jesus. And that's what we should, we should understand, that we don't have to be stopped from seeking Jesus. These men were quarantined off because it lets us know here in that 12th verse that uh, 
in that 12th verse of chapter 17, it said, and there the men, they, excuse me, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. So they were quarantined off. They lived in a valley by themselves, but they saw Jesus coming by. Jesus had just came from journeying from Jerusalem as he was passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Galilee. And so here is Jesus passing through. And just by divine intervention, here is their blessing coming, their healing coming down the road. And so they cried out as they stood afar off. Verse 13 lets us know that they cried out uh, with a loud voice and lifted up their voices and said, uh, Jesus, which is the Christ, Master, you know, have mercy on us. They sought mercy, and they were looking to Jesus for that mercy. They were looking for Jesus uh, to be their healer. And it says here that the men saw Jesus and they knew that he was their only chance of survival. Don't you know Jesus is your only chance of survival right now? Even though we're going through this pandemic, Jesus is still your only chance or survival. He's your only chance of making things right in your life. He's the only chance that when you see him, you know that you can trust in him. He's the only chance we have. And I'm so glad that we have a Savior who's not a dead God. He's alive and well, and you can still call on him, even, even though he's not present, present with us physically, spiritually, he fills us up each and every day. With his, with his spirit, when he wakes us up, cold in our right mind, able to think on him, able to say thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you for the air that we're having. And so these men asked Jesus a question. What was that question? The question was, Lord, help us. Have mercy on us. And Jesus didn't touch us. All he did was spoke a word in their life. All he did was tell them, go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass, as it says in verse 14, that it came to pass that as, as they went, they were cleansed. Why? How could that be? How could he just tell them to go show themselves and they be cleansed? Because of the obedience. See, that's one thing we have to understand. We have to be obedient to the call of Christ. But whatever God has for you, you have to answer that call. You have to be obedient to the word of what God has for you. Um, as God told him, go show yourself unto the priest. That's obedience. Because they could have said, well, no, we want to be healed by you. And he's going, no, I need you to go show yourself to the priest. And so they were being obedient. Uh, and so the healing started taking place. And because it says here in verse 14, as they were going, as they were going, they were cleansed. So every step they took, they started believing more because there had to be some belief and some faith that Christ can heal you, that Christ is healing you, and that you are healed. Come on, somebody. And John 4 and 51. It talks about the healing of, of the noble son, the nobleman's son. You know that uh, <clears throat> guy that came down uh, to Jesus as he was uh, coming through Gal Galilee. Galilee there. Sorry, I have tongue twister there. And he wanted to, his son to be healed. And so his son was sick, fever, about to die. And so he came to Jesus. That's John. Uh, the fourth chapter, the 46th verse to the 50, 51. And it goes like this. It was like, it said, and so as Jesus came up to uh, Canaan of Galilee, where he made water and wine, so that's where he did his first miracle. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick and cavern. Um, when he heard that Jesus was coming out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto them and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. 
but he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye, you see wonders, signs and wonders, you will not believe. See, guys, there's a belief that you got to believe and walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that God is able to heal you tonight. He's able to heal you whatever you're going through right now. He said, and the nobleman said unto him, sir, come down and heal, and heal my, uh, down here, air or whatever. I said, come down, my child dies. He just made it very simple. My child is dying. I don't know who else I can go to. Jesus said unto him, in verse 50, go thy way, thy son liveth. And a noble man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. The noble man believed the word that Jesus had spoken. The question is, do you believe what you read in this Bible? Do you believe the word of what God has said that he will do for you? He said, if you abide in me, John 15, uh, chapter 15, verse uh, 17, not 17, 7, excuse me, 7 through, uh, hold on, I got it, I'm sorry. I know it, I just want to make sure. Verses, oh, that was verse 4. It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit itself, the separate abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Uh, and then he says in verse 7 If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And so we need to understand that. God is letting us know that we need to abide in him. We need to obey him. There's an obedience with coming to Christ. There's an obedience. God told, uh, Jesus told this man, this noble man, uh, go home. You can go now. Your son is, go thy way. Thy son liveth. What did he tell the, uh, the lepers? Go show yourself to the priest. And sure enough, they were here. As this man went home, his servants came down to greet him and told him that his son was healed, that his son was not sick anymore. And that's where it comes in in John um, chapter blah, 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 4, verse 51, I'm sorry. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, thy son liveth. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And the, the guy was going, well, when did this happen? And they were going around the seventh hour. That's when the fever left him. But that's when the man was talking to Jesus. That seventh hour, he remembered what time it was. And seven is, is, is a new beginning. It's a completion. So this guy is, at the seventh hour, his son was here. It says here, um, by this man doing what he did, he showed faith, his faith was tested because he had to believe Jesus. He wanted Jesus to go with him. So your faith is being tested when Christ is telling you to go. Uh, Christ was healing already when he spoke the word. There was a great faith in that man leaving. There was some obedience to Christ that he, when he left. There was a faith and an honor uh, uh, to God. And there was God's word was sure. And it was Christ showing his power. And it was that seventh hour. His power was being displayed right there. That's why God can speak in our lives. And he's already spoken in our lives. And we need to understand that God has already spoken in our lives. It's up for us to believe in God. The more you believe in God, and the more you walk in the spirit, the, the more things will happen in your life. And you could be praying and, and just have the Holy Spirit start moving in your life because there's Holy Spirit in you. You have to know that. In first John 23, 3 and 23 and 24, it says, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth did his commandment 
dwelleth in him, and he in him. And thereby, and hereby, we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given us. Amen. The spirit which he has given us. See that? You have something and you're not tapping into it. What's that spirit? The Holy Spirit. And it dwells you. It's a person. And John, the sixth chapter, verses 28 and 29. It says here, Jesus was letting them know that he was a, uh, the, the bread of life. And this guy goes, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye, write this down, that ye believe on him who he has sent. That means that you believe in Jesus Christ, whom the Father has sent. Don't get this twisted. You got to believe in Christ, and then you got to obey his commandments, and then do them. He told those guys to go, to go, go show yourself. And they went, and they went and showed themselves. And then they were going. They hadn't even got to their destination yet. And yet they were being healed as they obeyed the commandment. And so here they're walking. Okay. Here they're walking along, being healed. And what happened? One of them realizes, hey, I don't got these. These bumps on me no more. I'm not, my, my hands were like a baby face. My face was like a baby face. But I look good. Well, let me go give some praise to God. And he turned back around. What the, it said in the verse 15, and uh, chapter, Luke chapter 17, verse 15, he said that one of them, when he saw that he was ill, turned back with, and with a loud voice, started glorifying God. That's why we need to thank God every day. There's no time that you don't need to be glorifying God. Even when things seem like they're not going the right way, they are, because God is still working in your life. And but you gotta understand that if you have a thought how many people God works with on a daily basis, not just your crazy self, but think about the other crazy people you gotta deal with. I think about that all the time, because Lord Jesus, you are awesome. Because God is awesome. He keeps working with all of knucklehead all at the same time. And he's working on all our knucklehead problems. Why not? If they would just believe in me more. If they would just trust in me more. Hold on to the truth that I have for them. I've got so much more I want to show them. And so this guy was going and glorifying God. And he fell down on his, on his face and at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You see how they put that in there? He wasn't a Jew. He was a Samaritan. He was a just like you and me. Ghetto. Yep. Just like you and me. And, and God's going, I love all of y'all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3.16. That he gave his only begotten son for each and every one of us. And we got to understand that God loves you no matter what you're going through. He will see you through it. In the time of distress, you can pray. In the time of uh, 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 confusion, you need to be on your bended knee, praying and giving worship and praise to God. I'm guaranteeing you this, guys. God will answer your cry. Trust me, I know he's answered my cry more than once in my life, even now. And I, I know he's going to answer me more and more. I can wait. Ain't no trouble with me. I can wait. But he said, you ain't got to really wait. You just got to believe. You know, he said, believe, trust, trust when you pray. It'll happen. You don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. If you pray in his will, if it's in his will, want to be done. And sometimes they help you to wait because there's some things he's got to clean off. But we're talking about healing for your hurts. And we all got hurts. And so this man had a hurt. And so we need to understand that uh, we need to just stick with God. It says, we would expect all 10 here, it said, we would expect all 10 to return uh, to the Savior, shouting words of praise and thanksgiving to God. The only one returned, and he was not a Jew, but a Samaritan. God may choose to heal you now, 
or later as you stand one day in his presence. If it is now, remember to thank him for the goodness and mercy he has shown. That's why you have to thank God every day. Because who do you think gives you your food? Who do you think provides you your shelter? Who do you think gave you air to breathe? That's a thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, right there. Who do you think gave you the coffee beans so you can have coffee? Huh? God. That's right. He created all those things that we take for granted because they're just right there in the store, right there on our shelves, and we take it for granted. God goes, I just gave you all of that, and you can't thank me for it. We should give thanks because it warms us up inside. God wants to love on us so much. He says here, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? He asked the God a question. Where are the nine at? Well, they were doing what Jesus said. He, they, were, they, they probably went on and showed the priest and kind of probably went on and had a hallelujah good time and praise and, 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 and showing off because they hadn't been around people. Hopefully they changed their clothes too because those clothes are already used to be clean. Okay, it says, and he said unto him, what was that? verse 18, it says, there are not found that return to give glory to God. They didn't even think about God. Once, and that's what we get sometimes too. We get complacent. We start, things start happening for us. Everything is going good. And then we don't even think of God. Until something, another, another circumstance come up or another hurt or uh, somebody needs healing. Now, could you pray for me? Could you pray for me? I'm thinking, you know what? I think you need to be praying for God. I'm going to pray for you, but you need to be praying for God, to God. And then trust in God. God already told you, you need to believe. I'm the one that the Father sent that you must believe in. I am the one. And so you need to understand that Jesus is the one, will always be the one, and he's the only one that can heal us and say it. it was his blood that was shed on Calvary uh, Hill. It says, that, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. His faith in Christ made him whole. Uh, and he needed to know that God is a hill. We need to know that God is a hill. We need to know that we all have brokenness and the power of sin and shame in our life. And God can bring us through that. Remember what God said in Revelation 1 and uh, chapter 1. Uh, verse 14. Uh, maybe that's chapter, oh, chapter uh, 7, 18, excuse me. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. God has the key. The devil doesn't have the key. God has the key. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches. And so, Father God, so we know that Father God has, has made a way. He's, he's right there for us. We have to trust in him. We have to believe in him. And we have to know that he is with us no matter where we, what we're going through or where we're going. God is with us. Amen, Emmanuel. And so, do you know who your healer is? Because healing for your hurts, you need to know that Jesus can do it all and has done it all. And so, that's all I have on that message. I'm Reverend Parker saying thank you for joining us for another choir Bible study. And we'll see you again, God willing. Uh, uh, for another uh, Bible study lesson. Amen. Study your word and let that word get into you. Amen. We'll see you again. God bless you.